Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, it's really wonderful to see you all. And I know some other angels will be popping in, uh, but we we'll just started some namaste. And this, um, this whole encounter is called Spirit of Communion. I love that term. I love the word communion. And it's centered around the scribing of Sebastian Blacksley in his unpublished work. It will be coming out this spring. It's called Truly Beloved Love Letters from the Divine Mother in You, book one. There's three books trilogy. And so I'm your host, Reverend Regia Joy, and um, your facilitator. And you know, this is a gathering right now. You know, it's a gathering of souls who have heard the call. And you've heard the call deep in your soul. You know, that um, this is a call to join. It's some called, Sebastian and Mother Mary have called it uh, the movement of beautiful love. And the material actually talks about this. As I was doing the audiobook, I, I came across in, in this book a, a description of what this movement of beautiful love is. And so I want to read it right now. I tell you in love and truth that God is calling you to join the movement of beautiful love he has created for those who want to live as the living Christ, they really are. You are called to be part of this movement, to remain in divine grace. In his design, he conceived this work so that everyone who receives these words with love will join the second advent in the holy expression of the truth of being. By this means, together, we will gather the voices that will make a choir of love and holiness for the second coming of Christ. Our choir will grow in number, melodies and tones by virtue of the new voices added. It will be a song of hope, a hymn to joy, a note from heaven. Thank you for answering my call. That's from Mother Mary. So as we know, the logistics are that we have, um, I welcome everyone. We have a welcome. We have a meditation. Two-minute meditation is good, I think. And, and actually, before the meditation, I'm going to um, read just a selection. And it comes from, this selection comes from letter three. And then we'll take a, after the meditation, I'll take a reading list. We'll read. And we'll share. And we'll have a closing meditation. I also have a reading for the, each meditation, the opening and the closing, I have a little bit of a reading from the letters before and after. So as we come out of our meditation, I'll be, I'll be sharing another reading from the uh, letters, from the love letters. And that's it. Okay, so. Uh, so. Now, I want to say that when I welcome everyone, there are no accidents and every, I always say every decision we ever make has brought us to this moment. And I, it's so wonderful. What that does for me is it brings me into the now and it sort of unites my past <laughs> and my future, I guess. It's just, it's just so unifying and it's, it's really a focus, a focus on present love, present being. And we decided to be present with one another, which is no small thing. And I thank you so much. Uh, and, and I have a little bit of a reading from letter three. I love letter three. So I'll take this into our heart. It's really, it's like love speaking to love. Youth is not just certain chronological age but everyone who has a burning and a free heart. These messages are addressed to the young at heart, spirits who have come to earth to sow the love of the second coming of Christ. These messages are for you whom I have called to join the peaceful revolution of love being manifested. <laughs> the revolution of love. And so we'll, um, 
will join now in a meditation and I time it for two minutes and we'll close our eyes and actually I'll start with a little bit of a guided meditation. If we close our eyes and bring all that awareness within, we begin to relax and surrender. And it feels good just to let go of the outside focus. It feels good to let go of those thoughts that we keep thinking over and over. They say that we keep thinking pretty much the same thoughts over and over. And they are our surface thoughts. They are limiting thoughts. They speak of guilt, resentment, sorrow. Speak of time, reminding us that we were born and that we're going to die. Reminding us of our limitations. We let all of that go, those surface thoughts, as we relax. Because we have our true thoughts that we are opening up to. And our divine mother within us is helping us to do that. And we're helping one another. So we relax the body. It helps to relax our thoughts. And also, it helps to relax our breath. We might focus for a few moments on the breath. And just noticing the breath. Not trying to change it in any way. Just becoming aware of the breath. If you are caught by illusion and have lost your peace, one of the things you can do is reach out to the breath. Notice the breath. Become aware and focus on the breath. It's always there as an anchor. It'll bring you back to center to the love that you are, to where everything is as it should be. Just a moment. And so now that we are relaxed, I'm going to just read us. Hold on. My poor angel dog is coughing. We'll just wait. Now that we are relaxed, these are words from the Divine Mother within. In the center of your being is a silence that nothing can interrupt and a holiness that nothing in the world can defile. We'll begin now and I'll bring us out.
If you allow silence to show you the truth within your minds and the love in your hearts, you will recognize that you know what love is and how to express it. So it is. When we're ready, we'll open our eyes. Thank you. Okay, I want to welcome some angels, Sandra Lewis and Kevin. Welcome to our souls. <laughs> Hi there. Uh, we just, um, yeah, we just did the welcome and the meditation. And uh, now I'm going to take, I haven't taken the reading list yet. So I'm going to take the reading list and put it in the chat so you know. Okay, Paula, so you know the uh, sequence and, um, and Kevin and um, Jacob. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. No, that's like, okay. yeah. You had it up. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Sandra. And that's it. Okay. 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 All right. So I'm going to put it in the chat before I forget. Oops. Just a second. Joy, are you speaking? I went on mute so that you wouldn't hear the typing I, for the chat. <laughs> I thought so. How soon we forget. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> what, what I said is I was going to share my screen. And this is truly beloved love letters from the Divine Mother and you. Thanks, Jacob. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm sure it's going to have a beautiful cover when it comes out. I don't have any idea, but I'm sure it's going to be beautiful. And I, um, there's so many I would love to choose from, but this hit home when I did the audio um, letter 87. It's called Rest the Heart. And there's some poignant parts of this. I have an annotated edition that I'll show when it's when I'm going to be sharing. Uh, also, what I was thinking of, I wish I could put this in the chat so you could read it. But if you do, after I stop the share of the screen, and if you, it's your turn to share and you want me to bring up the screen again, just let me know, okay? And I will. Mm -hmm. All right, great. Okay, so we'll start our reading. Um, letter 87, Rest of the Heart. <clears throat> My turn. Immense joy floods my immaculate heart and extends to the whole earth. It is the joy of a mother for those who are increasingly joining my divine son, Jesus. The seeds of holy love planted by the creator in your hearts are growing. The beauty of the garden of Christ is becoming more manifest, born of the love of the mother for her daughters and sons. And we'll just... Sit with that, and then I'll call on the next one. Okay. And Paula, you're next. Love searches everywhere and sees everything. Nothing is out of its reach. Beyond surface events, the vision of Christ lovingly compiles what is true in you and in creation. 
beyond the bleak panoramas, panoramas of a world separated from love, by which reality seeks, for, which really seeks for it, but does not know how or where to find it. Okay, thank you, Paula. Okay, Kevin. I have come to be with you until the end of time. My feet stay next to my offspring forever. As the mother of all, I embrace the entire world in truth. As a daughter of God, emanated from his divine essence and being one with him, I love you with perfect, true love. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Kevin. And Jacob. Mm -hmm. Okay. Be not intimidated by the screams of the world. The letting go of mental and emotional patterns, both individual and collective, of which is contrary to truth, creates a noise of farewell that sometimes seems to increase. But children of my immaculate heart, those cries are simply the sounds of the crumbling house of illusion. Let it collapse noisily in the gaze of love. Remain in love's presence, regardless of seeming circumstances. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, Sandra. In the center of your being is a silence that nothing can interrupt and a holiness that nothing in the world can defile. <clears throat> in the innocence of your soul lies the truth about life. When you remain in the temple of your holy mind where peace calls you, Nothing in the world can make you wobble. I am the power of love made true. Remain in me, and the noisy collapse of illusion will not make a dent in you. You will witness that your being covers earth and heaven and is also beyond them. You will become aware of your vastness. Thank you. Thank you, Sandra. Okay. Um... What does not come from truth has no real power over you. Not a single droplet of the polluted water, which seemed true but never was true, can touch the purity of your soul. Those who live in me and I in them cannot be infected with heartbreak, for untruth does not even approach their hearts because they are, the sh they are sheep in the Father's flock. They recognize and follow the voice of Christ because they are born of spirit. Their hearts and resonate upon hearing the voice of their divine beloved. Nothing can take them. Nothing can make them lose their love. We'll sit with that. Okay, um, Paula. You who receive and welcome these words of the Heavenly Father into the silence of your being, recognize the source of eternal vision 
and are the most cool to love because of your sensitivity. Be aware of that. Your hearts have been transformed in such a way that even a slight breeze can make you cry or laugh, sing or dance. You who admire the beauty of a flower and can immerse yourself in the joy of living when contemplating the songs of the birds, embrace your feelings. Rejoice to be able to cry before the desolate panoramas of the world when they make an appearance. Thank you. The paragraph makes me cry. Okay, um, Kevin. When you suffer because of the harm done in the world, your pain comes from love. When you rejoice at the sweetness of a firefly's light at night and glimpse in it the wonders of the Creator, you have crossed the thresholds of the earth and are living in the heights. Accept your sensitivity as grace from heaven. Do not suppress your feelings, for they will take you to truth when you embrace them with love. The dementia in which God's children sometimes fall comes from their denial of their feelings. And denial love is denied. And with it all that love gives as innocent, kind, and harmonious. Without love, there can be no life. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Okay, and Jacob, next one. Mm -hmm. The heart is the center of spiritual life. That is why I remind you again and again to appeal to your heart. Be aware of what is happening in your heart. Make it a dwelling worthy of Christ. Keep it gleaming, tidy, and clean so that you can smile in peace. Your <clears throat> feelings alert you to what you have done, thought, or desired. Never under underestimate their power to reveal truth. It is Christ who beats in your heart. When something is in disharmony with its divine essence, with its divine essence, you, you feel an inner stab so that you know to return to truth. And when you perceive something contrary to love, your hearts are broken because you know that your being will never feel happy living contrary to holiness. Thank you. Crying for love makes you divine. Laughing for love makes you divine also. Love beautifies everything. Love makes everything, uh, sorry, love makes every thought one with the mind of Christ and every feeling to bear witness to truth. Your heart is the sacred temple where love has made its holy abode. Do not let it be covered with feelings contrary to the beauty of your being. The nobility of spirit is what makes your soul feel dignified and live in peace. Grow the flowers of virtue in them. Could you raise that up a little bit more, please? Thank you. Uh-huh. Grow the flowers of virtue in them and make them living tabernacles. 
you know what elevates you. Thank you. We'll sit with this and then I'll, I'll finish up. Honor the purity of your heart. Be a relentless sentinel of your soul. Let nothing contrary to the sanctity of your being nest in your heart. Rather, understand it as what it is, a lamp of divine light created to illuminate creation just as sunrises illuminate the earth and give life. You whose heart has awakened in the light of truth, allow it to rest in the embrace of love. Blessed and praised be eternal truth. Thank you for receiving my messages. <laughs> I'm going to put up the annotated one that I have. So a while ago, my just a while ago, a little while ago, I, I remember I was on a Zoom, right? And I uh, it was it was on a Zoom with Glenn Huffman. I think he was on the Zoom too. I, I forget what Zoom it was, and um, uh, I I was I was sharing that the other day. I was I was just walking into a room and I was thinking, love, just love, just the word love, the idea of love, love, and I. <laughs> And I guess it was my soul just saying that all that matters is love. And Glenn said, well, have you heard of Sebastian Blacksley? <laughs> and I, you know, and he, he, he wrote the seven books, Choose Only Love. <laughs> and um, so I started uh, reading the books and attending the Holy Encounters. And so that was the beginning, but it was, it was interesting. I'm so glad that... Glenn, you know, turned me on to that. And, and we can do that for one another as well. You know, say you have a friend, you never know. You never know. I, I, I share it all the time when people on our chat, our website chat, we have a chat, by the way. So if you need to speak with me, hit the chat on jcim.net because it comes into my phone and it comes into my computer and I'm, I'm always on my phone and I'm always on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> and it, so anyway, and, you know, so I should see it come in. But anyway, so but I'll tell you what, when, uh, when I saw this garden of Christ, that one, the one thing I thought of, if looking at the screen and the first paragraph, garden of Christ, I'm listening to near-death experiences. I do that all the time, time while I'm working. And there's also a book, one of my favorite, favorite books that was given, shown to me or told to me um, by a core student. It's called testimony of light now i don't think it's anyway it's testimony of light helen greaves and she speaks of her friend who passed over into the light and uh who who built a garden and the garden was so healing people who came souls who came to the garden were healed <laughs> you know, say they still had stuff going on. They passed, but there's still stuff going. They would just sit in her garden and be healed. And that's what I think of. And I heard recently this person was describing his her death experience and he was he was in flowers up to his waist. You, you can imagine. And they were healing him. At first he was in grass. It was up to his waist, grass. And then he was in a field of flowers up to his waist and they were just flowing with love and healing him this is his near-death experience it was just so beautiful so that's what i that's what i think of when i think uh the view of the garden of christ is becoming more manifest born of love of the mother for her daughters and sons oh i don't know just beyond service events the vision of christ's you know lovingly contemplates what is true in you and in creation and that's my 
desire to, of course, open to the of Christ. I think that's what the Course in Miracles is helping us to do, is open to the vision of, it's beyond, beyond surface thoughts, beyond thirst, surface events, and it's going to show us what's real and true. And for me, that's forgiveness is, it's what's real about each and everything. And it comes from the vision of Christ. Well, um, I don't want to take too much. <laughs> I said, see, I sort of annotated a lot. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, you know, things that stuck out like the crumbling house of illusion, you know, that's pretty cool. And um, remain in love's press regardless of the seeming circumstances. And that's also my goal to, no matter what's happening, to, to stay in love's presence. That's a gift to me and to whatever whoever is is in is in relationship and uh and i did quote that in the center of your being is a silence that nothing can interrupt so it's just she she the divine mother talks about silence a lot silence how important beautiful um uh embrace your feelings absolutely we learn that from sebastian all the time from that being em embrace your feelings. I think I'm just going to um, turn it over to you guys. Um, this is so, so, so beautiful. <laughs> such beautiful guidance. It just brings such joy to my heart. I just want to cry, you know, I just, and, and having you here, it just also makes mm -hmm. me want to cry. <laughs> I just feel so blessed, <laughs> but um, I am going to, um, call on Sandra. Now, do you see your pictures on the screen? Mm -hmm. you, see one? you do? Oh, good. So mm -hmm. I can yeah. keep like, oh, good. I can keep the reading because it yeah. used to just do, do the speaker, you know, but I can keep actually I can keep the reading up. Uh, yeah. if that's, that's okay. Good. with is that good. Okay, good. Yes. Yeah, so, this way we can you can manipulate when we need to look go back to the end of annotated version I, I like those parts that you annotated oh, <laughs> I you're can so, relate to that I mean, so maybe, I'm sorry that you shouldn't do that I mean that should be a collective decision you know no oh good. no is that okay for everybody the annotated <laughs> okay yeah. I'm gonna call on Sandra and then I'm gonna call on Jacob and then we'll go from there so Sandra what do you have for us I think I have my yeah, hand um, I have my hand I'm oh, sorry. oh yeah Paula Paula's first I'm yeah. sorry Paula and then no, Sandra no mm -hmm. Sandra Whatever. Let Sandra <laughs> go first. I love it. Okay, Sandra. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> um, well, I really enjoyed this because love for me has been extremely elusive. And uh, that's because I didn't, I never had an, ex I don't have a point of reference for it, but I know it's an emotion. It's so, and an emotion is energy in motion. And I know I'm being told that that's what I am, that I am not a body, that I am this energy in motion, which is love. And um, I, I, I really appreciate. And so, so these emotions, um, you know, I get to to see them. Um, I get to see the lack of love <laughs> that I'm experiencing because. I would say that this heart has been broken, but this broken heart is broken open to see what is this that's not love. And it's for me, it's always victim. Always, always, always. It it brings me back to the the lie that I tell myself that I am a victim and that I'm not lovable, not loving. And it's just, they're lies. And until I can experience that emotion, and I don't usually share it with another person. I share those emotions with the Holy Spirit. And I scream and I yell and I cry and I say, why? And it's beautiful because it's showing me that I still have that victim consciousness, which may take me this lifetime and several other lifetimes, because I don't know if it's karmic or whatever, 
But it's so now I know that when I go into victim, which is a habitual pattern for me, um, I I can see myself as innocent. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that mm -hmm. I'm innocent and that neutralizes it. I turn it over to Holy Spirit. I ask Holy Spirit to show me the truth. And, mm -hmm. and I get to see that I'm still in victim consciousness and that's okay. I'm innocent. I get to see that the world is still in victim consciousness and that's okay because the world is innocent. And I get to neutralize the whole thing by acknowledging my innocence the world's innocence everybody's innocence <laughs> because that is our equalizer we're all innocent we all bought into a mistaken paradigm and and it's good for me to see that i still have that consciousness and that the world still has it because it's all about forgiveness you know and me forgiving myself and forgiving the world and and I'll keep doing it until I, I'm not here anymore, <laughs> until this body <laughs> just releases. And I'll be grateful for that. I'm complete. Oh, thank you, Sandra. That's really beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Who's next? <laughs> Paula. Paula, what do you got for us? Uh, well, you know, I've looked at some of the parts you highlighted and Yes, some of them spoke very deeply to me and particular lines <clears throat> at the end, the fourth paragraph that we're looking at here, you know, about, well, uh, let's go. <clears throat> For children of my immaculate heart, those cries are simply the sounds of the crumbling house of illusion. Let it collapse and whistling. They remain in love's presence regardless of seeming circumstances. You know, I guess that can go to what, you know, uh, Sandra said, you know, and to what I'm going to share and that we all share, because we do, I do, know that I live in the house of illusion, you know, having read The Course of Love so many times, and within the house of truth is the house of illusion. And it, it's there, it's there, and it's very hard for me at times, particularly recently things going on in my life still taking care of my sister and you know things in the world that just seem to you know I have it all settled and falls apart and I've been like really going within and saying you know like <clears throat> help me so you know help me on the soul's journey with my sister I know we're on a journey I don't know what anything is for it's turning it over and having that trust and that knowing and I hate to sound like, you know, I'm repeating and repeating what I've said so many times. That I say, you know, take your hands off the wheels. Everything that is unfolding is in the, unfolding for the higher good of me, of my soul and my sisters and any of the circumstances around us. And it's hard. It's hard when it keeps coming up. And as I've learned so much through the course of love, as within, so without. So if I see, keep seeing these roadblocks or what I feel roadblocks and stumbling blocks, it's like, what's within me? Am I holding back self-love? Am I holding something so deep? And that's when the gratitude comes in because I realize my sister and I are on this journey and she is mirroring to me what I need to look at within. And there are times I thank her but there's times, to be honest, I hate her, you know, so, but who am I really hating? Myself. She's playing her role exactly as we agreed upon when the souls came into this solution or into this dimension, you might call it. And, you know, it's, it gets difficult at times. And I really fall on my knees and say, like, why, why? And I'll get a surprise, a miracle. And I'll say, thank you, God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Mother Mary. Thank you, Sabbath. You know, <laughs> angels, whoever, Mother Mary. And yet I'll hit another roadblock. <laughs> so it's the journey. It gets tiring at times. 
But every step, and as we've learned in the Course in Miracles, during the most trying times is when we make our greatest advances. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me that when I'm banging my head against the wall, <laughs> literally and figuratively. So it, it's, it's a journey. It's a journey. And I, I'm learning to take my hands off the wheel, accept what is happening, know that it's not only happening for me, it's happening for every other soul in this dimension. It's a collective thing. The collective consciousness, I feel the fear in everyone. I don't want that fear. I want love. I want to emanate love out to the world. To step back from my fears and my beliefs. So it's a constant uh, journey, you know, and I love to remain in love's presence regardless of seeming circumstance. That alone. Just remember the love, and that can settle me down. Tears will run down my face, tears of joy, tears of sorrow, but it's okay. So that's what, I mean, this is beautiful, rest of the heart. I mean, this whole, those four pages were read, were so beautiful. Ah, so thank you for allowing me to share that. I'm complete. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Paula. Thank you so Thanks. much, Jacob. <laughs> yeah, um, Paula, I don't don't feel bad about saying take your hand off the wheel uh, many times because it shows. Oh, it's such a beautiful thing. It shows that you don't you're not giving up. You're in this cycle of of getting present, you know, with what is real, and it has to be over and over again. We we grew up for so many years believing this reality believing this dream is something other than it is you know and it's so it's real it takes it takes effort <laughs> i you just it to hear you say that really gets me in touch with my my own frustration of say, feeling and saying the same thing but we we hang in there together <laughs> and just keep taking your hand off the wheel and actually i'm going to steal that in my life um and you know and, jake um, i know i'm not alone you know that's the great that's the oneness yeah. of us you know, so if I join the collective energy of fear and doubt and this, I'm joining a collective consciousness, but yeah. I choose to try to turn to love and yeah. find that yeah. the love. Mm -hmm. So thank you, yeah. Jacob. Thank you. Yeah. And I and I I have a friend who um might be as challenging as your sister. And I, I just remember that, you know, deep down, that innocence of the Christ is in life. You know, she is life itself. She is the ultimate reality. She is the divine, and and I, I that helps me. It, it helps me to to get in touch with who I truly am as well. I don't know I, I, if, if that makes any sense, but um and um. Sandra said, "I am still in victim victimhood, victim consciousness." I think right, um, Sandra, and I. I know, I know what you're saying, and I'm thinking that I always, I always ask myself, well, who's in the victim consciousness? And it's not my my divine essence. It is my lower mind who is in delusion. And when we say I, then we're kind of, re I think we're kind of identifying with that, with that that lower mind. And uh, for what works for me is to say, well, look at that, you know, <laughs> I, I'm trying not to identify with it. And, and, but I don't even, I don't even, I try not to linger on the, um, the judgment of it. I just want to get in my right mind because my right mind won't have that judgment. My right mind will sit in um, the holy instant and the holy instant feels a lot more nurturing than worrying about or or voicing that my, my uh, I'm in victim consciousness, you know, that that illusion can can leave. It's been it's we've noticed it. It can just leave. And what we can make our reality uh, in is that that moment that that moment the, the the now moment where there is peace and there is right mindedness. There's there is love, and um, that's what I'm striving for um, when I. When I want to 
uh, beat my low, my beat up my lower self <laughs> because I, I, I know that it's because I'm identifying with it and I, I try hard not to identify with it. And, and I hope you don't mind that I'm, I'm responding to different people. It just, it comes up in my life and I, I, I thought maybe it might help if I showed some kind of connection to what I'm, 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 uh, learning or what I'm dealing with. Um, and one last thing I want to say, and Sandra, Sandra, hold that thought is, um, Joy, or, you know, twins, I don't, I just call you Joy, maybe Re Reverend Rija. <laughs> can oh, you honey. turn, oh, I'm sorry, can you turn to when you, to the paragraph that says when you suffer? Yeah. There it is at the top. Oh, okay. When you suffer because of heart. Uh, um, Oh, yeah, this is, a, I had a, there was a somebody on a call once that said they did, oh, this was years ago. They couldn't understand the pain they felt when they saw beauty. They didn't know what to do with it. Or, or, or when they had sheer happiness, they felt instantly um, a, a pain or, or just a confusion. <laughs> like, like either they weren't worthy or they were just afraid it was going to go away. I don't know what was going through their mind, but it was really bothering them about this this ache that they felt when they were, when they saw like a, an incredible sunset or something. So anyway, I was, I was reading that and it says when, um, accept your sensitivity as grace from heaven and do not suppress your feelings for they will take you to truth when you embrace them with love. It says when you rejoice at the sweetness of a firefly's light at night. Now that isn't as grandiose as a, maybe as a, or maybe there's no echelon. I think that's their point. There's, there's no real steps of beauty or um, wonder, you know, a little fireflies light at night and glimpse in it, the wonders of the creator. So um, I think we, um, we're so hard on ourselves, aren't we? We just should sit back and, and rejoice in it and, and, uh, and feel that, feel that joy well up. Um, I'm complete. Finally. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, oh, Sandra. Yeah, I loved what you said, but I'm, I'm sorry that you felt that I was beating up on myself because I was <laughs> accepting my sensitivity and seeing myself as innocent. Oh. So if you thought that I was beating up on myself, I was not. If I beat up on myself when I have emotions, then those emotions are not guiding me as to what right. it is that I need to heal. Yeah. So I see myself as innocent completely. Awesome. And I do have that awesome. sensitivity. And and it's a beautiful thing to be sensitive like that because it makes me more mm -hmm. compassionate, not only with mm -hmm. myself, but with others. And um and that's that that's what the world needs most is compassion mm -hmm. for self and others. Yeah. Yeah. And I, Jacob, I would prefer it if you just shared your own experience and not, you know, brought what you think my experience was into it. Just saying. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Sandra. Thank you. Thank you okay. for sharing. And thank you, Jacob. Mm -hmm. You know where it says on that same page, um, crying for love makes you divine. Laughing for love makes you divine also. You know, love beautifies everything. Your heart is the sacred temple. You know, what is our hearts feeling right now? Let's just close our eyes and feel. Let's go into the heart, okay? Hmm. I think it's so beautiful to feel the heart when it's breaking. <laughs> it can be beautiful. I'm... I am so grateful to be in this dimension where I can feel the depth of feeling and I can open up to something so beautiful, such as love and have it embrace me, comfort me and dispel my illusions about myself and about my brothers and sisters, because that love is what's real. 
always brings me back to reality. Right here in this dimension, in this incredibly difficult dimension, <laughs> there can be such gratitude. There are so many opportunities to stand back and see everything from the vision of Christ, every last thing. We're all doing the best we can at any given moment. And the love we have for ourselves and each other is so, what a tremendous gift. It's so healing. You know, in the Course it says, when I am healed, I am not healed alone. I am here to heal as he teaches me to heal. So uh, as we as we open our eyes again and and be with one another, we know that we're we're all so beautiful. We're, we're it, everyone is such a magnificent soul. First of all, for coming here. <laughs> Like, like, what did it say, you know, that we came here, um, we chose to come here, to be, a, in the Course it says, to be a light in the seeming dark. Oh, my God. You know? And if not us, who? Right? So, just to be, just to choose love in every circumstance. I mean, Regia, we're seeing your screen. I see the weather, the news. Oh! Oh, yeah. <laughs> My my mouse, when my mouse goes to the left, it just, you know, Microsoft just brings in all this news. <laughs> that, that'll be on the uh, recording. Oh, my God. <laughs> Scrub it. Scrub it. Maybe, some, maybe <laughs> well, the bastard, maybe he'll take that out. <laughs> yeah, we have someone new joining us. Oh, who's that? Oh, Kareen. Hi, Kareen. Uh, hello. Hi. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I don't know why I thought it was 2.30 and I came late today. And, uh, <laughs> but it's not too late because I got a lot from what was just shared. And oh. I was busy trying to click out the weather because I thought I did it. And I'm there trying and I couldn't make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, I love oh, it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh, here it's we really are beautiful. laughing. It's so good to laugh. <laughs> okay, oh, I'm trying to put my hand down. So glad down. you joined us. So glad. Do, does every do do you see the screeching now, at all? You guys, is it or is no. it just me? Is it the just me? Is it is up and we're on the side. Yeah, you're on the side. On the are side. you on? Are you on the side with one row, or two one rows, row. or one? Yeah, uh, my row has Kevin, me, you, Elliot. Uh, Paula, Kareen, okay. and Sandra. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's nothing change about that. Um, might not include everyone. I'm not sure. But so glad to see you, Kareen. That's so wonderful. Oh, oh, bless you. No, bless it you. says seven participants. So I think it, uh, Ida dropped off. Because it only says yeah. seven participants. Yeah, I think she did. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Kevin has his hand up. Oh, thank you, Kevin. <laughs> uh, hi, welcome. Um, I can only see like one person on the screen on the next to the um, what's happening there, but I don't know what. Oh. Maybe, I wonder yeah. if you can change your view. You know, up there's a view. Sometimes oh. for mine, there's little boxes that show okay. side by side speaker, side by side gallery. Gallery, oh, yeah. gallery, Gal try the gallery. gallery. Okay. Yeah. Do you see everybody? Uh, no. No, just you? <laughs> now we see her. Right, right. News. <laughs> <laughs> Hit my, my mouse again. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I found it. Okay, Great. cool. Great. Oh, good. Good. Uh, so, so uh, on the sixth paragraph, the one that uh, Joy that said that made you cry when you would almost cry when you. Uh, oh yeah, what? When, which one was that? Um, six, I was think. it that? No, the, that, it? the second. 
Uh, no, no, go one more. One more Down. page or? One more page, yeah. Down. One more page? Right, yeah, this one here, breaks your feelings. Okay, uh-huh. So mm -hmm. anyway, this particular uh, uh, reading that you chose today, just, um, uh, it's just what's been manifesting in my life and in my being. Uh, and um, continues to do so. And I just rejoice and I get so happy and I start to shed tears at like the beauty of nature. And I'm every Sunday I watch the Mormon Heaven Echo Choir. They're doing their presentation, which they do every Sunday morning. And they do it uh, live on video. And they have the choir singing and uh, beautiful songs about Christ and their messages. It could re resonates with, with ours, actually. Yeah. And um, all the instruments that are being played in this magnificent organ that's just huge, but and all the sounds from the voices and the instruments and all uniting together in this beautiful melody. It's just, um, it just made me cry this morning when I was, and uh, so a friend of mine who has friends in Utah, um, I'm going to go there this summer and actually visit the site of the, and, and go experience this live, you know, but just seeing all the different faces of the individual singing, and each one is their own unique being, it's just, I'm really starting to see the Christ in everything, wow. which is, you know, like, wow, <laughs> I have that experience too. And it, it could, it never has to turn off. I mean, like if you're having a bad moment, if I'm having a bad moment, I just have to read, okay, it's here and now. I mean, I am the Christ and I'm looking at the Christ and the crisis and everything. And, Life just begins to emanate its beauty to me constantly now. And I just love life now more than I ever have in my, and I'm 69 <laughs> years old. <laughs> and I just thought, I never would have thought at 69 years old, I would be more happy and more content with my body, my mind, and my spirit, and life and friends than I could ever be, and it's just going to keep increasing. And like they say, this is just a taste of what, <laughs> you know. Right, right. Um, but anyway, I just, uh, I, I sent you some stuff there, Reverend uh, Joy. Uh, it was uh, uh, a friend of mine who I'm going to go to Utah with, the one who's going to, um, uh, she sent this to me, the Crimson Circle. So maybe you want to check it out later, but there's 21 different uh, takes that it gives, and each one of them resonates so much with what you've been sharing and what we've been sharing here that I thought it might really catch your interest. Great. But anyway, oh, great. I'd like to share that with you. Yeah. So anyway, um, bless everybody, love to everybody, and thanks for listening. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. That was great. Thank you. <laughs> hmm. Get such energy from joy, <laughs> from the feeling of joy. We recently in the course were reading about saying yes. And I remembered years ago, I had this sort of, sort of event in my life where I sort of had this total collapse of my psyche. <laughs> And it was just really precious. It was, it was, I mean, my, it was terrifying, but it was really precious.
precious. And when I when I came out of it, I remember painting. I don't paint, but I don't for some reason I I did this painting. And it was a mountains and sky, beautiful uh, sun, sun, the, the colors of a sunrise. And right in the center was this word, yes. <laughs> and it really, people when they had like near death experiences come back and paint about their experience. And I don't, I, I, I don't, I know inside my soul that I was painting The yes to life and the opening of the opening to everything that life has to offer. I guess with the previous experience, I thought maybe my life would, was going to be over. I didn't think I would be able to function. And now I was able to function. And so I was saying yes. And you know, now I hear, sometimes I hear in my mind and it says, it's it's as if it's my oversoul or or I'm not sure who Jesus or Divine Mother and they say, are are you are you ready for you know some I go yes, you know just even before they finish <laughs> yes, <laughs> use me, just use me, <laughs> and, and and I guess when we open to our creativity that's when we get used you know and then the next step comes about but anyway I didn't know I was going to share that but thank you everybody. <laughs> Thank you. Say yes. <laughs> Say yes to love. Yes, Jacob. <laughs> and oh, then Paul. No, I, I, I was, I was trying to click a heart. Oh, okay. And I clicked a, hand. a reaction. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Paula does did a heart. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was doing. <laughs> that's what you were doing too. That's funny. And Elliot, Elliot. Your story. Your story touches my heart and my soul. And I was wondering, you said you read it in the chorus. Do you mean in ACIM? Okay. Yes, and it was reading, I think it was Thursday's reading uh, because we have our Thursday Zoom. Uh, on Thursday night, we have a Zoom, my husband and I, and I was gonna share about it and I somehow forgot or I didn't get a chance to. <laughs> so I'll have to go back. So it's Thursday's reading somewhere in there. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes is yes to life. Yes to God. Yes to your unique self. Yes to love. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And we said yes to this movement of beautiful love. We said yes to this holy encounter. We said yes to opening to the love that we are and, and, and listening for how that can be. How can we do that? <laughs> that kind of thing. And uh, yes to Think about it <laughs> in your life, you know, what, what you're saying yes to. It's divine. It's powerful. Paula. Yeah, it, it's true. It, it, there's, there is power to that, to say yes. I mean, you know, the divine, the truth and you know, and, and that's where I have to go to remember that power within, you know, it, it's there. And when I allow myself to fall into anything other than the powerful soul that I am and allow the soul to feel less in any way, or, and, and you know, and I'll use the word, like Sandra, a victim. And, you know, I can be a victim of anything. You know, it's, I don't want to, I, I know I have the power to see beyond that because the truth is within. And if I'm playing that and, and doing that to myself, that calls for a tremendous amount of self-love to see the truth. And, you know, so it's, you know, for me, Every moment of this human experience, you know, which is an experience, I'm a soul having a human experience, it's a lesson. It's, it's, and, you know, and I stand in such gratitude that, you know, having found the soul found its way, you know, I'll call myself the prodigal child, you know, I went awry, I did whatever, but, the, you know, there came the time 
and you know, raised Catholic, I had certain beliefs, you know, hell and heaven, you know, the whole gamut. And I left that and I was kind of like wandering in the hinterlands and lo and behold, it just comes, you know, you find your path, you know, whether uh, a book, and that's how it was. I was at a friend's house and I looked at this book, The Seat of the Soul. And I said, what the heck? And I read it and that was the start. From then, it, there was this need to know. And then I was, you know, going through life, meeting other souls that were showing me the way, you know, and I kept finding it. And, you know, I was faltering, going back and forth into the hinterlands, whatever. But it's all the, the, the journey, you know, and it's the soul's journey. And, it, you know, and I, I'm such a believer that in my soul, my way of, handling what you call this so-called life is that we come into this dimension with a, a script and everyone in this in my world playing this script right to the T <laughs> right to, and there are no coincidence it's happening just the way it's supposed to so during those times when I'm not laughing or crying and I'm, I'm angry or in fear and self-judgment it was and then I look, and that's, like I said before, that's when I stand back and say, like, why? And it's like, let it go. It's not the truth. Live in the truth. Mm -hmm. And there's times it's easier, and there's times it's harder, but that's okay. You know, with everything I've learned from the miracles, from because of love, choose only love, age of the heart, whatever you want. I'll keep reading it and reading it. I'll read anything that tells me it's really God loves me with all my warts and pimples. That's my old standby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, and there's days that I, I, I honestly, I'm on my knees crying. Especially, you know, my role with my sister. It's like amazing, amazing what these uh, two souls have from greed. And it's really from love. No matter how harsh it might seem, it's from love. I look at it that way and it's, but it's Beautiful. life. I chose it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to fight it anymore. I'm trying not to, I should say. <laughs> <laughs> I have to laugh. If I stop laughing, I get very concerned about myself. <laughs> I do. And it's the little self versus the big self and the big, you know, the ego. I put that ego to bed already. <laughs> it's like I won't put it on a pedestal. No way am I going to kneel in the, at the uh, uh, pedestal to the ego. No way. It's part of my little self. It's okay. <laughs> Give a bit <bit> love. <laughs> Kindness. I'm sorry. I'm laughing because I, I need to laugh. But thank you for letting me say all that. Thank yes. you. Thank you for being my listeners. I love to laugh. We laugh a lot on Thursday night, and Chris is just a, such a hoot. He just loves to, you know, he loves to have fun, my husband. So tell us to be happy learners. Be happy learners. Yes, I've happy read learners. that nine million times in the Course of Miracles. Be happy learners. God's will for us is perfect happiness. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah why not well you know? i would have why for one would have appreciated a handbook <laughs> just a little leg up and a little earlier <laughs> nah. don't mess with me Jenka. just the way it is <laughs> you know it's right um the, i mean there's what on go ahead go ahead no, oh, I was just going to say it's 10 after and we're going to work. We end at quarter after um, the hour, but we're, and we have a two minute meditation and I have a little bit of a reading before and after the meditation, but we have time for, you know, a little bit more sharing and then we'll, we'll do that. Okay. <laughs> well, I, I was going to say some of these revelations that we have after discovering the course and, you know, um, and, and other readings are just so phenomenal. It just takes reality and puts it on its head. It's no little thing. It's no small thing. And I was thinking during the, our first meditation, I, I, really, I really wish we had some kind of inkling. <laughs> some, I mean, when you think of it, 
I don't know, maybe it's too heavy for the ending. <laughs> it's just consciousness mm -hmm. wants to experience itself, divine loving consciousness. And and so we have these teaching instruments, these bodies and, you know, uh, this thinking mind, and we're supposed to figure it out. We're so, supposed to see that this, this is um, a dream that we are in and um and that we are a divine consciousness the divine consciousness and that's a very heavy thing and to have to ask a person to be to be born into this perception this you know this hard this is real kind of perception is just a really i think a a, a tall hill to climb I was just wishing that there was some kind of little handbook or something. Just some little I had, thing. You know, Jake, Jake, you're reminding me of um, a thought I had the other day, and it was I, I it was an observation. And I I was observing that I wasn't looking at, and I don't know if I'm, I'm going to be able to explain this, but I was looking at life from here out. I was all of a sudden looking at the end back into this life. Do you know what I mean? Like the end, which is absolute perfection, you know, the perfection of my being, perfection of life, God. And, you know, and then from that perspective, looking back into the, it was like a shift because I used to, my whole life, I was always, it was always, you know, here looking out and making sense of everything and trying to make sense of everything and trying to understand and trying to survive. And then it's shifting now and it's shifting from absolute completeness and, and wholeness to looking back at here. I don't know if that makes any sense. And uh, we have actually, um, Sandra, we have time for probably one minute if you have, if you, you wanna share, hon, and, and then we're gonna do our meditation, okay? Oh, I was going to say, you know, my shares are pretty short, but I love okay. the reference to individualized curriculum. And I can't take it personally. It's just <laughs> an individualized curriculum. <laughs> Thank you. Before oh, you start, Kareem, can I, Kareem, yeah, Kareem. I just want to quickly say the one sentence that I captured from the little time that we were together and that I see happening here. And that's the seeds of holy love planted by the creator in your hearts are growing. In our hearts, oh, the seeds are growing. The seeds and that's, are growing. Yeah, and yeah, that's it. And, and we have to do nothing but at the title was rest of the heart. Just rest in, in rest the heart of, the heart. of mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for hearing the call to join together and there are no accidents. I'm every time I think about it, I just I'm just so filled with gratitude for all of you. Completely blessed. And so we want to close our eyes now. We're just going to take two minutes to go into our meditation into the silence. And, and I'm going to preface this from the letters. And then I'll bring us out with another little um, segment of the letter. So as we go into our meditation, we hear the divine within say, I invite you to become aware that you are elected by God to be part of the movement of beautiful love, a movement of Christ consciousness that will allow love's extension to all corners of the universe as part of the second coming. We'll take two minutes and I'll bring us out.
If you were chosen for this call, spirit knows why and how. The opportunities that are needed, the events that are required, and even the thoughts, words, feelings, and beings that are necessary will be given you. Everything comes from love in this flow from heaven. Thank you for answering my call. And so it is. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Amen. Thank you all. Mm -hmm. Good day. See you in two Stay weeks. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. I'm in touch. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.